In lesson three, we're going to learn all about the start menu. We'll learn about the lock screen, logging on and off of Windows, tiles and active tiles, running and closing apps, the all apps screen, pinning and unpinning apps to your start menu, moving and resizing tiles, and locking, signing out, and shutting down your computer. As I mentioned earlier in the introduction, this class focuses primarily on people using traditional computers or laptops with a keyboard and mouse. However, I realize some of you are probably using touch devices, tablets, phones, whatever. Now, whenever you hear me use the word click, that's the same as tap. That's clicking the left button on the mouse, and that's the same as just tapping on the screen somewhere. If I say double click, that's clicking the left button twice real fast, click, click, which is the same as double tapping on something with your finger. Now, if I say right click, that means click once using the right mouse button. Obviously, there's no mouse button on a touch interface, so what you do is you tap and hold. In other words, tap your finger on the screen and then just hold it there, and a menu generally appears with options for what to do. Oh, and of course, there's one more. There's click and drag. Click and drag means to click on something with the left mouse button, hold it down, and then drag, move the mouse to the left or right or up or down. That's pretty much the same with a touch interface. Just tap on the icon and then drag your finger across the screen. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over mouse basics in this class. If you need help using a mouse, the difference between click, right click, double click, I do have a Windows beginner class. It's called Windows 101. You'll find it on my website, and it's real simple. Now that we know this, we can get ourselves logged into Windows. When you first start Windows, you'll see a screen that looks like this or some other picture. This is called a lock screen. To get past the lock screen and log on, either click anywhere with your mouse or press any key on the keyboard, or if you're using a touchscreen device, swipe up from the bottom. That will bring you to the log on screen. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, we're not going to cover configuring Windows. I'm going to assume that someone else has already configured Windows for you. And if you've purchased a new computer, a laptop or a desktop PC, when you first turn the computer on for the very first time, Windows will walk you through creating a user account. Now, I set up an account called Richard, so I'll click right here and type in my password, and then either press Enter or click this little button here to log on. That will bring you to the Windows Start screen. Now, if you're used to older versions of Windows, you'll immediately notice that this is completely different than what you're used to. Microsoft has replaced desktop icons and shortcuts with these things called tiles. These tiles represent the different apps that you're going to be running. Now, don't worry. Later on in class, I'm going to show you how to get back to the desktop and to set up the traditional icons and shortcuts if you like that, which I personally prefer that. I like to minimize the amount of time that I spend here on this start screen. Don't get me wrong. This start screen is great for phones and tablets, but for desktop PCs, I prefer the old classic Windows desktop. Now, you will notice that the information on some of these tiles is changing. For example, here's the financial tile, the finance app, the weather. You'll see some news, sports. Here's the Bing tile, travel. And these are changing as I'm just sitting here. These are called live tiles. They're kind of neat. Sometimes they can be distracting. I'll show you how to turn them off in a later class. Now, to run one of these apps, all you have to do is click on the tile. For example, here's Internet Explorer. And if I click on this, you can see Internet Explorer opens right up. The default home page is msn.com. It looks a little different from the Internet Explorer you might be used to. You can see the address bars on the bottom. Again, this is optimized for tablet use. And there is a classic version of Internet Explorer you can still use on the Windows desktop that I'll show you in a few minutes. Now, closing an app in Windows 8 is a little strange. You can either use a keyboard shortcut that I prefer, or you can use the mouse. To use the mouse, bring it way up to the top of the screen until you see that hand right there. See the hand? Now click and drag and pull this window down toward the bottom. All right? Click and drag and bring it right down toward the bottom and then let it go. 
that will close that app and bring you back to the start screen. It's a little strange, I know. Again, it's designed for tablet users. So if you're using a tablet or a touch screen, just use your finger, start at the very top of the screen, and swipe down to the bottom. That will close the app. So there are three ways to close an app. You can swipe from the top of the screen if you're using a touch device, or you can click and drag from the top of the screen using the mouse. Remember, bring it up until you see that hand, and then click and drag it down. Or my favorite method, Alt-F4. Hold down the Alt key, and then press the F4 function key on your keyboard. Alt-F4. That closes a program, whether you're running an app, or even a traditional Windows desktop application. You can press Alt F4 at any time to close a program. Now there aren't many keyboard shortcuts that I personally remember. I use maybe a dozen of them tops. There are hundreds of them. And I've seen some books that go through and list all of them. You're never going to remember them all. But there are some keyboard shortcuts that I use on a regular basis that I'm going to show you. Alt F4 is definitely one of them. Now, the tiles that you see here on the start screen aren't necessarily all of the applications that are installed on your computer. If you right-click anywhere on the background here, or swipe up from the bottom if you're using a touch device, you'll see a special menu bar comes up that says All Apps. Come down here and click or tap on All Apps. Here you'll see the full apps menu. On the left-hand side, you'll see all of the different apps that are installed on your system. These are generally all of the Windows 8 apps. Some of them are on your start menu, some of them might not be. Over to the right, you can see all of the classic Windows applications. Now there is a scroll bar down here on the bottom, and you can click and drag, if you're using a mouse, to scroll left and right. There, I've just scrolled over to the right a little bit. Or you can use these arrows over here. There's an arrow on the right and an arrow on the left. These are all the different applications, both classic Windows applications and your standard Windows 8 apps that you'll see on the system. Now they've tried to organize these into different categories, much like the folders used to be in Windows 7 and before. Here you can see, for example, the Windows Accessories, the Ease of Access applications, the Windows System applications, and so on. Personally, like I said before, I prefer the old Start menu with the hierarchical folders. And I'll show you later on some third-party applications we can install to bring that start menu back. Now, ignore all of this tight VNC stuff. VNC stands for Virtual Network Computing. It allows me to remotely access my training computer from a different machine where I'm recording my videos. So pay no attention to that. That's just another application that I've installed. But I'm going to scroll back over to the left here where I can see all my standard Windows 8 apps. If you're using a touch device, by the way, you don't have to use that scroll bar. You can just scroll back and forth using your finger by swiping left and right. To get back to the start screen, just right click and turn off the all apps option and that brings you back to the start screen. And remember, touch users can just simply swipe up from the bottom to get that menu. Now, as I mentioned before, you can resize these tiles by simply right-clicking on them, then selecting Smaller. That makes a tile smaller. I like some of these tiles, like, for example, People, we can make smaller. We don't need these to be that big. Notice how the tiles kind of fill in around them, right? Messaging, smaller, and so on. Desktop. Now, Desktop brings you back to your traditional classic Windows desktop. I'll show you that in a few minutes. You can move these tiles around. Let's say you use Internet Explorer the most. I'm going to click on it and drag it up to the left here like that. And put it up in the top. See that? Maybe move the Maps tile right here to fill that space in. So you can move these around. If there are tiles on the Start menu that you'll never use, let's say you never play games. This is your work computer. So I can right-click on that tile then come down here and pick either Unpin from Start, which just takes it off the Start menu, but it's still installed, or Uninstall, which gets rid of it completely from your system. I'll pick Unpin from Start, and then it disappears. Now, let's say you goofed and you really want it on there. Okay, right-click, bring up the menu, or swipe up from the bottom. Go to All Apps. Find the app, there it is, Games. Right-click on it. 
and then you can pin it back to the start menu. All right, let's go back now. Right click, turn off all apps, and notice it's up there to the right. See, kind of hiding up there? Now, you can scroll back and forth using your finger if you've got a touch device, or if you have a mouse with a wheel on it, you can scroll down, and that will move you to the right, or scroll up, and that will move you to the left. You can also use the arrow keys on the keyboard to go left and right, back and forth. All right, see that? Now, depending on the manufacturer of your computer, when you bought your computer, your laptop, whatever, you might have dozens of extra tiles on here. They like to install all kinds of extra third-party apps and games and virus scanners and all that stuff, and I'll show you how to remove that in a future lesson. But you might have a bunch more tiles over here. I kind of streamlined this machine down and took off everything that I didn't need. But I'm going to bring this games tile back into the fold by clicking on it and dragging it right down here. And there we go. And yes, you can create custom groups of tiles and all kinds of stuff we'll talk about later. You may notice also, down here in the bottom right corner, there's a little minus sign. See that? Now ignore those little buttons that just flipped up there. We'll talk about those in a second. If you click on that minus sign, it zooms you out. So if you have dozens of extra tiles here, you'll see them up here. You can also get this look with a touch device by pinching and zooming. That's taking your fingers, putting them both on the screen and then pinching in or pinching out to zoom in and out. Now in this bird's eye view, you can work with whole groups of tiles. For example, let's say you want this group on the left. Well, click on it and drag it and bring it over here. And you can drop that group on the left-hand side. We'll talk more about arranging your tiles later. Now, what were those crazy little icons that popped up a second ago? Well, if you move your mouse into the bottom right corner, or the upper right corner for that matter, this thing called the charms bar appears. All right, we'll go over these charms in a lot more detail in upcoming lessons. But essentially, this is where you go to search, to share things, to bring up the start menu if you're somewhere else, access your different devices that might be installed, and settings. And settings changes based on what you're doing. You'll also see a clock over there on the left-hand side. All right, we'll talk more about these charms. they got their own lesson coming right up. One more thing I want to talk about on the start menu. Right up here you'll see your name, your username, and possibly your picture. If you click there, you'll see Change Account Picture. This will let you either pick a picture that you have on your computer as a file, or my other laptop has a camera on it. You can actually take a picture using the camera app. I'll show you that in a future lesson. You can lock your computer, which will take you back to the lock screen. That's handy if you have to get up quick and go get a cup of coffee or go to the bathroom. Just hit Lock and it'll bring you back to your lock screen. There we go. I'm locked. I'll type my password back in. Or the next option is Sign Out, which logs you completely out of Windows, and again puts you back at the login screen. Now a lot of people ask me, how do I actually shut the computer down? It's not exactly evident from the Start menu how you do that. Now if you have a tablet or a laptop, Generally, with the laptop, you just close the lid or you press the power button on your tablet or your laptop, and that will put the computer into sleep mode. Sometimes it goes into something called hibernate, which is slightly different. I'll talk about the differences in a future class. But that's generally good enough to put the computer to sleep to where you don't have to worry about it. But if you want to actually perform a Windows shutdown, like let's say you've got a desktop PC and you're, you want to open it up and clean it or do some stuff inside, you want to actually shut the computer off. Now the easiest way to shut the computer down is to go sign out. That'll bring you back to the Windows lock screen. Here it comes. Now click. That turns the lock screen off. And then down here in the bottom right corner you'll see a little power button. Click on that and you'll see shut down. That'll give you the option to shut the computer down, restart it, or put it in the sleep mode. Sleep mode is generally what happens when you tap the power button on your tablet or just close the lid on your laptop. Basically, Windows keeps everything kind of running, but in a low power state. But if you actually want to turn your device off, that's where you go to perform a shutdown.